Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I have a boatload of ideas for making messy, distressy journal pages. That is because I have two new art journals for sale. They are filled with boiled pages. These are mixed papers, florals, watercolor paper, text, handwritten, butterflies, and then I add some rusty washers and some purple and yellow onion skins. The whole thing is then tied into a bundle and simmered in a bath of tea. So the pages are boiled, boiled. This one has a faux ring binding, but with ribbon instead and an open spine. And this one is just loosely ribbon bound into a vintage book cover. Whenever I make these art journals, I sometimes hear, well, the pages are nice, but am I really meant to work on this as a journal? Is this really supposed to be something where I can put my own, my own work, my own expression? And the answer is yes, yes. These are very much meant to be worked in. I have friends who make junk journals who say they, they hear the same thing sometimes, that people like them, but uh, just see them as merely decorative. They don't know how to just jump in and start working on them. So I have a lot of ideas today. There's some bold, pretty, fun ways that you can get your own work in messy pages or junk journals, if that's what you like. You can have just, of course, use a blank sketchbook or notebook. Use what you got. If you like art journals and journal arts, if you like vintage books and altered books, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on the notifications. You will have more of them in your life. Now let's go make pages. First, a little business. If you are interested in either of those art journals, there is a link to where you can buy them in the text below this video. I also have something new. Every time I show boiled books on YouTube, I'm asked if I am ever gonna make downloadable scans of the papers. Well, I finally did that. They are on Etsy and they come as a bundle with 53 papers like this, the mixed papers, all different kinds. So if you're interested, there's also a link to that. You can bounce on over there use them to make your own book or in any other mixed media project. They make great stuff. Now, this is gonna be a lot of video, so I'm pretty much just gonna make pages and talk about how uh, we get from layer to layer. But first, let's look at some of the stuff I'm gonna be using. Mainly, we're talking about scraps here, and I know you've got scraps. This is a piece of an old grocery bag. Let's see, I'm gonna do some mark making. These are some watercolor thingies that I've been working on. I'm following a channel on YouTube by Susanna Rose and she teaches how to do easy, easy watercolor techniques and use them in mixed media journals. And one of the things she suggests is that after you, you make pa practice pages and then you go and you, you cut them out to use in your pages. I'm going to put a link to her channel as well because you really will enjoy it. It's, it's, I'm learning so much. If you don't have any messy watercolor papers that you've made yourself, maybe you've got some, some images from magazines. Uh, this one's from a free brochure I got at the train station. I'm just going to cut that out, and that will be a big, bold bloom instead of a hand-painted one. Uh, this guy, same thing. He came out of a bird-watching magazine from the 90s. I just got it for a few pence at the charity shop. Here are some really pretty papers for backgrounds. They came from the discount craft store. So it was like two pounds for all these papers. You can do a lot with them. This is 
some tissue paper that had a mishap. So I didn't throw it away. Are you crazy? Free art supplies. I'm going to use it, lean into that mishap and rip it up and use it. This is a bunch of other magazines uh, I was about to recycle and I kept some of them for the found text. I don't know, I like that. Not you. Experience. So I'm just going to be rough tearing those or cutting those out and using them for, for found text in the pages. And here I have done some stamping on, this is vintage tracing paper. And this is just some rubber stamp with ink. And when I glue down this, this tracing paper, it will go almost translucent and the stamp will really pop. You can use this technique on tissue paper. It's actually better on tissue paper. And you can also use it on a tea bag. It's gonna go, it's gonna be a cool effect. This is, you can use any kind of old art project that didn't work out. I bet you've got a ton of them in a shoebox. Let's see. This is where I tried out some al alcohol inks on clear gesso. And I wasn't crazy about it. But I kept it because now I can tear it up and use it as fodder and uh, collage things. And we'll see where we go. I'm going to be using some gesso, acrylic inks, lots of bold color. But as always, use what you've got. I'm going to be working back and forth between two of my art journals. That way, while one is drying, we can keep on moving like sharks. This is a book that I made for myself from an altered, um, yeah, it's an altered photograph album, vintage photograph album. And I have a video showing how I made this book. And if you'd like to see that, the link is in the text below. If you do not have messy pages, you can, of course, just work on blank page pages, as I said, or you can take your blank sketchbook and just add a page of text. Just glue down some print from any old book that you have, or sheet music, or a map, or tissue paper, and hey presto, you're going to have your own messy page to start working on. Now, here is one which was uh, botanicals, wildflowers. And I added a strip of handwritten uh, scrap there. It was just, I just rough tore it. It was in my scrap basket. I bet you have a scrap basket. If you don't have something handwritten, again, just use text or whatever you like. I want to add a little texture here with some gesso. So I'm going to pick up a, just a little bit of gesso with um, a card. I don't want to get a full coverage, so I'm just going to get in there and make a mess. Because you know I love that peeling fresco look, that fading wallpaper. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite looks. And this is the go-to way to get it. So I'm just bouncing that in there with a card. And it's going to add some texture and depth. I was thinking about using the hand-painted violets because I really like purple against green, that foliage. But I think instead I'm going to start with this big oversized flower that I got from some uh, a free brochure. A good place to find big flower pictures are coffee table books old calendars, magazines, gardening magazines. Um, shouldn't have too much trouble there. I'm going to put that up there to anchor the page. Here's another bloom that was there. It's got some print. I don't care. And I'm going to put it down here for a little bit of balance. Now, usually when I work in a book, I like to um, do my own hand lettering. But again, this is a lot of page, so found text from magazines and books is really going to give you a bold bold thing that you can uh, that will stand up to the page so this was from a magazine you can now i think i'm going to put it there 
something like that. Be right back. Let's add some mark making. I'm going to emphasize this, this text by going around and making some rough frame here. You're going to need a lot of, a lot of pen or marker. So nice thick line, maybe a Sharpie marker, something like that. That's going to pop. Now I want to pick up this border here. So I I'm taking a soft chalk pastel and I'm going to go around the rough torn edge of the, the handwritten piece. And I'm going to smudge that in. like that. Oh, I do have my smudging tool. Ha, look at that. For those of you who have been wondering if it really exists, it does. Okay, that's looking good, but I'm gonna add a little bit more mess. So what I'm gonna do is this is some ink mixed with water in a mini spritzer, spritzer mister. And I'm just gonna put something down here and spritz across the top here. And then activate that with some water so it's gonna go right down the page and make drizzles. It's going to resist a little bit where the gesso is. That's really going to give it that peeling wallpaper look. And there you go. You've got a lot of page that is your own expression in a page that was already a lot of page. A couple of quick tips. Obviously, if you've got text or something that's really, really dramatic, you can just cover it with gesso or a white paint. I had n did not get a complete coverage here. I didn't want one, but that is an option if that's your style. In instead, I just did it uh, a little bit patchy so that I could still see the text underneath. But now there is enough of a canvas here that I could write or draw my own work. The second thing is if you have something that's like an echo print, or you might want to use a stamp pad or something, is to draw into what's there. It's uh, everyone is different, so it's kind of like a Rorschach test or uh, an ink blot. It lets you interpret interpret what you're seeing. I'm just making it super loose and messy. I'm drawing flowers. Uh, you could draw animals, but I don't know how to draw animals. So there we go. Or you could make it into something abstract. I'm just going to add a little bit of thingies there, some leaves. I could add some text here if I wanted. But now I have this really fun and mysterious abstract drawing. This page is a map that's got the echo printed onion skins and some rust. And it would be easy to look at this page and say that it's uh, too challenging to work into, or you could just see it as a background. Uh, you do need a strong image to stand up to this much background. Um, but certainly this guy fits the bill. I'm going to add to that over here, the butterflies that I stamped onto a tea bag. I'm using for glue. I'm using an acrylic gel medium because that's what I use, but by all means you could use a craft glue, PVA craft glue, or 
Mod Podge, or even a glue stick. Use what you got. Make sure that guy stays put, so we flatten it out here. This scraper, I bought at a hardware store for about 69 pence, and I use it every darn day. Okay. Now we'll do the tea bag. And the same thing, I'm just going to... This can get a little bit messy when the paper gets wet with the uh, adhesive. It's going to be a little bit messy, uh, but that's the whole theme, isn't it? So, okay, now when I put this down, you can see that the, I'm going to go ahead and let it fold in on itself, give it some texture, but you can see that it's, gone partly translucent so those butterflies just seem to be sort of hanging there it actually the tea bag gives it a little bit of a, a look of linen like a very fine linen that you could see through now for some embellishing again i'm going to use a soft chalk pastel this is one of my far favorite art supplies they are far more versatile than a lot of people think. They're easy to find, inexpensive, and they last forever. When you're working on a page like this, you do need bold color and a bold line. And you're gonna also get that with your chalk pastel. I am going to add a stencil. And what I'm gonna do here, I don't want this to be perfect matchy-matchy lined up. I just want it to be, again, like, peeling wallpaper. So I've got my stencil here and this is some clean water in a spritzer and I'm just gonna give the page a light spritz. You don't want to get it really really wet. Just damp. Now I'm going over this with my chalk pastel. And you can see it has not really worked in. You have to give it a little assistance there. Work that pastel into that damp spot. And now it's almost like a, it's got texture to it. It's got a slight raised edge. So you've got some texture, some color. I think I'm gonna add a little bit to this guy back here just to pull the balance of the page it's heavy down here let's pull the balance back up here a little bit we'll give him some drama yeah because he's not dramatic enough right okay there you have owl meet art journal page here are some of the hand-painted watercolor flowers. I'm just starting to learn watercolor florals and um, not very good at it yet, but um, you can see this doesn't take a lot of proficiency. It's just fun and pretty. And uh, again, from Suzanne Rose's YouTube channel. There's a link to that. It is a delight. So I painted it and then I cut it out and I've glued it to this text which, you know, be difficult to write over. So we're gonna go big visually here. I'm going around the image with my Derwent XL Chunky Stick. I will write that in the text below in case you wanna know more about the materials. But again, you could use a chalk pastel. I just like that it does that bold color, which is what we need. Not worried about it being precise. It's not that kind of page. Now I'm just gonna activate, these are water soluble. So I'm just gonna activate that with some water on my brush. 
Don't want perfect coverage. Just make it a little daub in there, dab in there. Go over the edges. That's fine. And there you go. Easy peasy. It is going to take a lot to stand up to this much butterflyness. Uh, you could just leave it as the page in the book like this. I think that's beautiful. Or we can have a go. I have another one of the flowers that I painted and cut out. If you don't have some hand-painted flowers, again, look in some magazines or books. You'll find them. Or use something else. Now, here's a, a little strip that I tore from that scrapbook paper. Just some, some roses on a bluish background. Let's ink up the edges a little bit. I've got a blending tool and a ink pad. If you don't have a blending tool, you can just use a makeup sponge. I do that all the time when I'm not in the studio. Now I'm going to add that over here for an asymmetrical line, breaking up the page a little bit. But you've still got plenty of wings poking through everywhere. Now I have the text from a magazine that said, boldly go. So let's put that down there. Yeah, it's a little bit asymmetrical there. I've gone around the text with this uh, blue chalk pastel, just adding a little line, soft, irregular line, to kind of so soften it and help it pop a little bit. I really like how that looks. I want to add a little bit of mark making here got some gesso and uh, this is a little Japanese teacup but you could use you know anything a makeup jar or the lid of a makeup jar or uh, any other kind of thing that you got I'm just gonna add some little circles here looks like you stepped into cement and that is a look I really like. Now I want to try something abstract. I'm just going to, I have no idea if this is going to work. I just have some scraps. That's that art test, art supply test. Uh, here's another one where I was trying out acrylic paint with stencils on tracing paper. So I might tear that up and see how it looks. Just some script scraps from the scrap box. And there I've stamped on some tracing paper again, just using an ink pad. And a, I don't know, a couple of guys here. We'll see how that works. Okay.
I got this guy in a book of fish identifying page thingies uh, for a fishing guide in a thrift store in Mississippi. So there you go. I like that he's kind of horizontal against all of this verticalness. So I'm just going to add some... Acrylic gel there, some adhesive. And let's see. Just try that. Yeah, try that there. There. Right there. I'm not the fishiest person in the world, but his expression is uh, priceless. I feel that way sometimes these days. And I think I will add a little bit of asemic writing. Asemic writing is when you make letters that look like words that are symbols that are you just making them up. So it's not Semitic, it's a I'm sorry, not Semic, it's asemic. It just suggests language. I'm using some acrylic ink here. That doesn't want to come out, so we're going to leave it there. I hope that this has given you some ideas for making fun, messy, pretty layered pages. And that you'll be making some of your own. I have a monthly online newsletter. It has free art tutorials, uh, free scans, the occasional pep talk. Would anybody else like a pep talk about now? Because I know I would. The days we live in. Anyway, if you'd like to subscribe and join me, the link is in the text below this video. There are also other links to really good stuff. So check those out. In the meantime, I certainly plowed through a lot today. So if you have any questions, if I can troubleshoot, please let me know in the comments below here and we'll we'll get that sorted until next week happy making